Ugh. This is a gloomy day. Like, really gloomy. And looking at the forecast, it's gonna stay this way for a while, though it's just a chance of rain. All these days, it's not definitely going to rain, but it makes me nervous. The rain is a good thing. I like the rain, but not with the camera. That's, that's never good. The heads up, a big part of this vlog might be filmed on my phone because I'm not gonna have my camera out there in the rain, but I got a lot I need to get done this week. And I'll keep working even while it's raining. That's not that big a deal. Oh, nice big yawn pumpkin. You such good yawns pumpkin. Yes, you do. You such a good yawner. Um, excuse you. Can I help you? What are you doing down there? You wandering? What you wandering around for? Okay, you're scared of the camera. You too, huh? Come on, come on. There we go. The main thing that I need to get started on is moving some of these plants out. I already started taking some of them out and I'm just gonna kind of baby step my way through getting the rest of them while well, you are. This is a very dry Monstera. Oh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good, I'm great. I find it odd that I always say I hope you're good because in real life, I always say well, I never say good. I always say, hope you're doing well, I'm doing well. But in these videos over all these years, I've been saying good. It's not proper grammar, I'm so sorry. I showed you all last week the roots from this Monstera that have started to come down from the top of the plant and dive right down into the pots of my other plants, mostly just this croton. Oh, and it looks like they got Mr. Freckles too. Oh no, Mr. Freckles. That one originate from, looks like it comes through I wonder if I just like, what do I do here? Do I just pull? Little slide. Okay. All right. So Mr. Freckles was just sitting on top of that root. Good for you, Mr. Freckles. Such a good plant. I love this croton so much. I don't even see any mealybugs on you and you're sitting right next to the mealybug monster. The, this cordolin. The mealybugs have loved this plant and I've let them. Just been letting them do their thing on this plant. That way I just have the one plant that I know I need to spray because it attracts them all over there. But anything that's too close to it, like this is, this shouldn't be rubbing on it. That's not a good idea. Anyways, I'm gonna pull some plants outside and uh, walk around and see what's going on in the garden. See what's going on out there. Try and get some stuff done before the rain moves in. On to round two. Round one was the stuff I moved out that we didn't talk about. Well, I showed you last week in the Dracaena, the Monstera, and then today, lots of uh, some not everything else, but mostly everything else I'm working on getting out. Look at how big the tie has gotten. I'm gonna try and get a better view, hopefully, without falling in the pool. There we go. Oh, that's not that much better of a view. So happy to have this one back outside. I couldn't even see it in the grow space because it was all up above my head. It's gotten so big. And now, okay, it's starting to rain again. So I'm gonna speed this up. Got Mr. Freckles over here. Freckles. I just realized if you haven't been watching the channel for a few years, you don't know. this. It's just called Croton Freckles. For whatever reason, I call it Mr. Freckles. I don't know. That's my favorite Croton. The mother and daughter, also I think called Spoon Croton, right here. The roots from the Monstera just slid right out from inside the pot, so that wasn't a big deal. Dracaena over here needs some cleanup. Got a bunch of old foliage on those stems that I need to prune off. Look, did pretty well. That's an easy one to overwinter. Parlor palm looking kind of shabby because it was buried behind a bunch of things and I I forgot about it. My bad. Alpinia, you may remember this one was struggling back in the fall time when I was moving things in and I repotted it last minute and I know that it doesn't look great, but for being overwintered, it's not bad. It actually kept growing and there might be enough growth that held on there to get some flowers out of it this year, which would be really exciting. And then there's a Dracaena, Marginata back here. That one's the Colorama doesn't look like it needs more light. And then there's another Dracaena back here. And then <laughs> all these right here. I went ahead, I've been pulling them out, lining them up here. Let me go around. One by one, bringing them out, lining them up and checking them over for pests or anything like that. Because you know, keep trying to keep them clean. When I bring them in, do a lot of spraying and a lot of maintenance on before I bring them in. Tried to continue with that. <laughs> I fell off behind on it a little bit for a few weeks, but try to stay on top of spraying them all winter long and now it's really important to make sure that if there are any bugs on them, get them off of there before I go mixing them in with the rest of the plants. So they have all had just, not all of them, shouldn't say that. The bird of paradise, there were some mealies on them, but not very many at all. They sprayed off, no problem. Just use the dish soap, peppermint oil, rubbing alcohol and water solution and uh, spot sprayed them. I'll keep doing that for a few weeks, really probably all summer, just on everything. Cause I really would like to be done with this mealy bug thing and it's gotten a lot better. And that's mostly just from constantly staying on top of the spraying. So here they are. 
not everything, but a lot of them. Variegated alocasias over here, looking okay. No reversion, so I'm happy about that. Have some different types. You don't have any reversion, do you? No. Papaya did well, just hung out like a stick all winter. Easiest plant I've ever tried to keep throughout the winter time. Philodendron somatophyllum by Pinatifidum. A little bit wonked, but that's okay. Tough growers, not concerned about it. Altissima, ficus, trooper. Didn't really have to do much of anything with it over the winter. It like got splashed with water occasionally, and that was it. Just kept growing like a champ. Same thing with the little fiddle, ficus larata. I've talked before about how, like, I don't know. I'm not really all that into the larratas. They just, I don't know. They kind of bore me. They've been around for so long, that's all. But I held on to the little fiddle. I was on the fence about it. There is something about it that I find cute and I just, I enjoy it. So I'm glad that I held on to that because I've purged a lot last year and I'm still doing a whole bunch of that. So I'm glad that I didn't over purge because I really enjoy this plant. Backstachys lutea. This one started coming out of dormancy about a month or so ago. It needs more light to start to go into flower. And really, I should give this a pretty heavy prune. I should probably cut this back like 50%, but I don't know. I probably won't. Bad hibiscus. That's just what they look like when you keep them cool and fairly dark all winter. And then a bunch of Pothos, there's a Manjula back there, a Snow Queen, and a Marble Queen, and a Chlorophytum. And I'm gonna let these sit here and marinate, and I guess next time we see them, they'll be in the backyard, probably. So it's raining too hard for me to do anything else out there, so we'll pick back up later when things are more pleasant out there. Rain that up just for a little while, long enough for me to get everything that's in the driveway moved out. I do think, though, I'm gonna have to come in here and do some washing on the leaves because there's a lot of leftover gunkiness from the bugs that were on there. I'll probably need to wait till tomorrow. Are you not going to focus? There's not, it's just a white spot. Dead mealy bugs, I've been going through and like smashing them too to make sure that they're no longer alive. Don't want them spreading around. I do still need to do some pruning on a lot of the plants. Got my clippers here. These are the ones that I got for super cheap not too long ago. They don't want to focus. They don't need to focus. They're rusty. I really like these. I got those Felcos not long ago and I've noticed that I keep going back to using these. I think it's partially because they're really, really simple to open. Come on, come on camera. Let's go ahead and show everybody what I'm talking about here. You don't want to autofocus? What's that about? There we go. That was ridiculous. Anyways, I was just going to say to open these, you just push in and it unclicks the thingy up here and they pop open and then you do that to close them back up. But there's just something about that. It's so easy. I, the Felcos that I got, the little catch thing that used the safety thing to close them up, it, like, it's really hard to get that out. I think I just need to loosen a screw or bolt or something. I don't know how I got off on this tangent anyways. Okay, that's not where I meant for those to go. One thing I noticed with the papaya right here is that when I picked it up, it started to just fall over because it's a it's not rooted in there like at all, but, but look at how neat all this is. I don't know if that's root wrap or if it's just like that's its own little storage system it has going on it. It's very similar to what I would see on like a Ipomia on a sweet potato. Whatever the case, I'm just putting it back down in there for right now. As it warms up, that will root out again and start growing. What is up with the camera? As it warms up, that'll root out and start growing again. It's getting kind of late. I was going to go through and start pruning out all the dead stuff, but I eh. don't know if this is the best time to do that. I like better lighting. Lots of stuff needs to come out of that parlor pond. There's some dead stuff there in the pothos, all the old leaf sheaths here inside of the ginger. I think the little fiddle, it's okay. It has some messed up foliage on it, but otherwise, I think it's okay. Justicia down here, this is Justicia carnia. I think the variety is called bubblegum or something like that. It's from like Garden Geeks. I planted this up last year with a bunch of bromeliads, which are no longer here. They flowered, they're done. But I went ahead and brought it inside and the justicia just kept doing its thing all winter. But that, similar to the pack of stackies, I think that that could use a prune, probably out 50%. For those types of prune jobs, the anything where I'm gonna be cutting the plant back in order to get it to flush back out, I figure I should wait until it actually is warm. The weather's better right now than it has been, but it's not warm. The, the nighttime lows are back into the 50s and 60s, which is great. That's why the plants are out here, finally, but it's still not warm. Like, I think it got up to 62 today. I'm wearing a hoodie. 
I'm kind of chilly. Looks like the week after this video comes out, or late into the week, maybe Friday, might be up into the 80s. I want it to be warm when I do that kind of pruning. The uh, Maya palm, Mayan palm, this is a Hooperiana. It has a whole bunch of dead stuff I need to prune out on it, but it's really not looking too bad. I have to say, I was going to talk about this palm last year and just never got around to it. This might be my new favorite as far as just houseplant palms are concerned. This thing has been a trooper. Deserves its own video for sure. Where I kept this in the garage last winter was just in a, pre it was in a pretty dark spot. because so I used that plastic to keep things warm to block off the tropical area that wasn't transparent. So it was pretty dark. There was no grow light on this plant. There were lights in the ceiling of the garage, but not very close to the plant. They're a few feet up and they're pretty low wattage. And it's just, it's fine. I'm, a lot of this stuff is from last year. So most of that's not from the winter time. You can tell because it's down lower. It's been putting out new growth despite like me totally just leaving it alone and not worrying about it. The temperatures were cooler, so I wasn't watering it very often. This got a drink, I'd say maybe once a month if even, that's it. But again, it wasn't warm. If this were in the house, you know, in around 70 Fahrenheit or warmer 68 and up getting bright filtered light, it would need to be watered more often than that. It was in a dark, cool spot, so I didn't have to mess with it. But if you're looking for a good palm to keep in the house, it's low fuss and nice and pretty and graceful, highly suggest this one. They are kind of pricey. I will say that much, but they're cheaper than Kentia palms. So, but that's not really a fair scale. I can call almost any palm cheap if I'm comparing them to a Kentia palm. Yeah, I'm gonna get that cleaned up. It's getting late and the camera makes it look like it's not, but it's starting to get dark out. So maybe I should just tell myself to go inside and cool it and come back out here tomorrow when there's better light and can maybe get a few more things done out here. Oh, there, there's still another round of plants. Forgot to mention that. We're gonna talk more about them tomorrow. Have the Busy right here, the Bismarck palm. Did really well, lost a couple fronds, but otherwise pretty sturdy. And then the Enset Morellii. That's just what it looks like when I overwinter them. That's a whole long story, we'll talk about it later, or probably in a minute tomorrow, but that's a long time for me, just a few seconds for you. Oh, and I tucked the Bipinatifidum back over here into this corner. It should be pretty shady, like the bird's nest ferns back here, and not the bird's nest ferns, the Australian tree fern is back here, and I don't think it's getting anywhere near enough sun, so this should be a fairly decent spot for this to acclimate. I need to update my camera. I don't understand what's going on there. I'll play with the settings some more tonight. But this overall theme here is just that I'm trying to stick things, all these plants back into shady areas. You know, you have to harden them off to take them inside and gotta harden them off when you bring them back out, right? This, this is right at eye level and it has been bugging me for such a long time. What's going on here, camera? There we go, that's better. No more branches in the face. I know, just moments ago I said we'd pick back up in the morning, but then I was like, eh, it's Saturday. Chances are I'm gonna forget to pick up in the morning. Like, I'll pick up the camera and we'll start doing something, but I'll forget that I was supposed to go back to that banana tree. So I decided to go ahead and finish my chores out here. There are some mealybugs on the trunk here. Not a lot, just a few. It's one thing with the palms, it's important to check inside and try and spray down inside these old sheaths because that's usually where the mealybugs hide. I don't see any in there. So hopefully it was just that one trunk. That seems unlikely, but maybe it's the case. I don't see any in there, not so far. Oh, that one's good. Also, I don't usually recommend pulling these off when they're not ready to go. Usually when they're brown, they're ready to go, but that's not necessarily the case with the Hooperiana. The Mayan palm. Sometimes they hold on to those brown sheaths for a pretty long time. So maybe I'll just hold off on pulling those other ones off. I don't want to stress it out too much. It's already been through a lot, been in that boring, dark garage all winter and then out here in the freedom with the fresh air. I'd give it some time to recoup. Don't want to put it through too much. That's the whole point of all this, right? Acclimation. So what I was going to say about the Enset. Yes, it looks terrible. There are various ways to store these during the winter. A lot of people will take them, they'll cut the foliage off, they'll pull it up from the ground or from the pot, trim the roots off of them, give them a really good rinse so that there's not any soil around the pseudo stem, the base of the pseudo stem, and then like hang them upside down someplace dark, cool, and dry, or put them in paper bags. And there's, there are a lot of different ways. The way I do it is um, I just move it inside, put it someplace dark, cool, and dry, 
it gets splashed with water, just a little bit of water, just a teeny tiny bit, maybe once a month, just enough to keep it going. Because the problem with the garage here is I can warm it up during the winter time, but I can't cool it down. And where I live during the winter, we'll have days where it could be zero degrees Fahrenheit, and then the next day it could be in the 50s or 60s when the sun's really strong gets pretty hot in there and that's why I don't let these hangar go dormant because I have had issues with that in the past where they basically can't go dormant so I just kind of let them trudge along and then I when I go back in later I'll grab my machete or a knife and I make just a big cut right across there get the stuff cleaned up and I stick it into full sun don't have to acclimate it because I'm taking all the foliage off put it in full sun get it fertilized and watered when the heat arrives boom bounces right back within a couple weeks and looks totally fine. So there's that. You enjoying the view, the trash can, and the cars and everything? Always keeping it classy over here. Oh, it is a beautiful morning. You hear that? That's from outside. The birds, they've been singing up a storm all morning. It's so peaceful and relaxing. Look at these cupcakes a friend of mine sent me for my birthday. Aren't they adorable? They're so cute. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to eat them. Cute little succulents. They're from Bakery Blooms. Bakery Blooms by Amy.com. I don't know if they're local or if it's a chain. I'm not sure. They did a very good job. These are very pretty. They even got like the color on the edges of those leaves. So fun. I've been gathering my, some supplies, get ready for the day. Got the machete. That's necessary, so I'm gonna fix a flat because there are still a few plants left in the garage that I can't get out because they're too heavy. And the dolly has a flat tire, and then I mixed up some more spray for the pest. This is roughly 10 fluid ounces rubbing alcohol, then another 10 fluid ounces of water up there. This is 10, 10. And then uh, maybe at most a tablespoon of peppermint oil and uh, a few, maybe a teaspoon of dish soap, just enough so that it's sudsy in there. And then I added a little bit more water because my pour was a little heavy with the peppermint oil. I wanted to make sure that it was diluted enough to not cause any sort of damage. I think I figured out what the issue was with my focus last night. I think it was probably a power thing because the very last thing from last night that I was filming, the camera just turned off, but it was at 42%. I have a bad battery. Two over here, one of them's charging, the other one charged last night. I don't know which one it is. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Whichever one of those is bad, it's gonna have to go. So I figure maybe it was a power issue. And that's why the autofocus wasn't working. I really don't know for sure though. This seems like a bad combination of things to try and carry with one hand, but I think it's fine. I got a cover on the machete. Just kidding, I'll put the camera down. Good morning, sweetheart. She's a little bit angry. I'm cat sitting her cousins. Smudge and Vinny, they were in the vlogs years ago. And um, she's, well, she's not thrilled about it. They used to be best buds, her and Smudge. And I'd show her, but I don't, I don't know where Smudge went. You know how cats are, they're not like dogs. They don't just embrace each other. They were apart for a little while. And now she's like, I don't know you, get out of my life. She actually loosened up a bunch. Smudge was over here in the window a while ago and she didn't even care. She was like, okay, there you are, keep your distance. But we can be in the same room. Oh, there she is, hey Smudge. How you doing, Smudge? You so pretty. Yes, you are. You such a pretty kitty. I was reading the rules on here, and it doesn't say anything about like this having to sit or anything, other than like have a professional repair of the tire. This is, I mean, it's just like a band-aid. It's not a permanent fix for this tire, but this tire right here, I mean, it's completely, totally flat. I can put on the shoes. I might be doing some stuff today that I don't want to smash any toes. Yeah, shouldn't be able to do that with my fingers. And this cart says it's supposed to hold like over, I think, 1,200 pounds. But I'm gonna go ahead and say that that is a lie. Okay, I have to shake this for 30 seconds. It says the hold can upright. And I don't, how am I gonna hold it upright when the tire's all the way down here? That doesn't make any sense at all. I've only ever used Fix-A-Flat one time. The only thing I remember was to make sure that this part is on there all the way or else you're gonna get that stuff Squirting all over the place. Press firmly. Also, I have no idea. Ew, that's normal. All right. It says to do this until the fluids, or the stuff stops moving through the hose there. This is a really old can. So I maybe shouldn't be doing this. I really don't know. I've had my car friends in the past say, never use fix a flat. I'm like, okay, fine, but. I don't just have like a surplus of extra tires laying around. And this is what I've got right now. So 
what I'm gonna do for right now. I'll have to change the tire, that's okay, but right now I need my dolly. I don't feel like going to the store and buying a new tire. It's supposed to be inflating the tire, but that's, that's not, looks the same to me. Well, I don't know. Did it stop? Yes, finally. Or did I just stop pushing down hard enough? Oh, I just stopped pushing down hard enough. It's been like two and a half minutes. I'm starting to get bored and the top of my finger is starting to hurt. Come on now. Okay, no, that's, no, I just wasn't pushing down hard enough again. I keep thinking it's done, but it's really just me and I keep letting up pressure. I know this has nothing to do with plants, but you know, vlog stuff. That's, that's all that's going on here. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to actually put air in this thing because it doesn't appear to be inflating at all. I guess that's not really the point of this stuff though, is it? Even though it does say that it might inflate, but then it also says if needed, add air. Huh. I don't know. That's going to have to be enough of that. This is either going to work or it's not. I still have a feeling as soon as I put the Eureka Palm on here, no matter what I do, it's probably going to go flat again. I, I'm not sure. We will see. I'm going to take this on a little walk, help spread that. Oh, I shouldn't be able to just turn this. Oh, but it's not inflated. That's why. The rules on the back of the can said may need to, like, turn that wheel. Walk your, not walk your car, drive your car around just a couple miles, help spread it out, and then add more air if necessary and I just that wasn't very smart was it that's enough of this we'll get back to plant things here in a minute hopefully as long as I can get this tire working okay both tires were flat and I remember didn't I like load this up with like 600 pounds of pool salt at one point in the last few uh, this I I think that this might be my doing I may have done this. I looked at the tire to see the pressure because I had to put air in them and it clearly said 400 pounds max. So I don't know where I got that 1200 pound number from. Maybe I was thinking of the gorilla cart. I don't know, I've had this thing for a long time. It's been pretty sturdy and done really well. Or maybe that's like how much weight it can hold before the metal bends. I don't know why that would matter if the tires are only at 400 pounds. Either way, like those pots I need to move are nowhere near 400 pounds. I don't, am I supposed to? like take this on a two to four mile walk like the can said with your car you should drive it around i'm not doing that i've walked it around the pool a few times to spread everything out i guess i could like duct tape it to the back of the car drive it around but my lazy butt i'm not taking this thing on a two or four mile walk that seems unnecessary i only need to move a couple pots just just keep it in here and just help that get mixed around for a while. Riveting content, right? I'm so sorry. That's what's going on today. In the meantime though, I am going to do a very light spraying. This is an all natural, it's cinnamon, peppermint oil. Pills on contact. The, there are these gnats out here. They're called like buffalo gnats or midge flies or midge, I don't remember what they're called. They show up for like six to eight weeks out of the year and they're tiny. They're not noceums. They're bigger than that. They're like teeny tiny flies. They fly right for your eyeballs, your nostrils, your mouth, your ears. They like dark circles and dark spaces and they bite. And oh my gosh, the bite hurts. It's not horrible, but you feel it. And it, at least for me, you swell up with like welts and they don't go away for like three to four weeks and they burn and itch and are very uncomfortable. So that's when I start to draw the line and I say, okay, it's time to start spraying. If I can't even be outside, Time to spray. Obviously I will keep this away from anything with flowers on it so that I'm not hurting any of the pollinators. But my experience with this particular product is it's mostly the scent. The scent, that peppermint oil and the cinnamon when I spray this just slightly up in the grassy area over here, that seems to do a good job at just deterring them. Like they can't smell you or the dogs. It seems to mask whatever it is that they go after. So just having some of that out makes a really big difference. I'm gonna put some of that down, give this time I don't I don't know if I'm supposed to I'm sure the comments are going to be full of all types of suggestions and people tell me that I wasn't supposed to use fix the flat here but like I said it's what I got I don't have extra tires laying around get some later I figure I should try what I have first and see if it works and then get some more plants moved out fun start to a beautiful day I'm not even going to be doing that much today. I'm just gonna move a few more plants out and then I have a few other projects I'm working on I'd like to get some more planting done here but I got a few other things I have to do first it worked. So it's over to my phone because it's raining. So I just wasted like $8 of spray. It smells fantastic out here though. It smells like, well, it smells like Christmas, like cinnamon and peppermint oil. It's not a big deal. That spray like doesn't really kill bugs very well. I think I mentioned mostly just use it to uh, kind of mask and deter the mosquitoes and things from 
biting. I sprayed it like directly on a whole bunch of mealybugs. It says it kills mealybugs. It's been an hour. They're still ticking and moving. So I'm go so home remedy stuff for that. This is good. I don't know exactly what to do with this just yet though because it does still have some bugs on it. So I don't want to move it out quite yet and I'm still I've been dealing with some stem rot in this plant all winter long or at least for the past couple of months. I've treated it with some systemic fungicide and then been spraying but I think it was from there was a period where it warmed up a lot. There was a period of time where it warmed up unexpectedly like in the middle of winter where it was like 20 degrees one day and then it got like 80 outside. Then the growth space it was bouncing up into the 90s because like I've mentioned before I can't cool it off in there. I can warm it up. It's pretty hard to cool it off and I think that it was just there were several days of extreme fluctuations that just yeah, didn't really go so well for it. That's never been a problem before. So I think that the different plastic I used last year, this year, must have done a good job insulating things. So there is that. It's always always a learning experience. I'm going to put a vent in next winter so that that doesn't happen. Anyways, that, like I said, it's raining. So here we are. You finished? I think it's done. You like what I've done with the umbrella here? I know it's not what umbrellas are for, but... It works and this one's broken anyways so it's like it's fine this will do for now and I'm not gonna lie I kind of love it I don't have them over where I actually sit because you know I don't want stuff falling on me it's just for a little while not a big deal yeah I think it's done at least for a moment and that's all I need with the I forgot my spray don't want to forget that aren't these cute these little sandcastles. Talk about adorable, right? Those were birthday gifts. I love them. But the spray, that's what I was going to do. So typically with the plants, I like to put them into the shade and they should remain in the shade where they'll get like filtered morning light for a couple of weeks and then I'll bump them up to getting more light. That is a, a very general, broad way to explain it. I don't do it the same with all of the plants. Sometimes there are circumstances. Shake this up real quick. Sometimes there are circumstances with certain plants where I don't mind putting them right into the sun. This is making weird noises. I'll do it later. Something like this areca palm where there's potentially some sort of fungal issue going on. I take them right out to the sun. I'll sacrifice the foliage to some leaf scorch. It's well worth it. The sun is a really good way to combat those problems. And also, you know, I've talked about how I'm not a huge fan of neem oil just because I don't like the smell. But this is a situation where once I'm done with this, just doing a light spray where I can see the bugs, I will come in with neem when it's going to be dry. There's not really a point in doing that right now. Hello. There we go. I'll make sure the neem gets down into those crowns. Because neem is great in the sense that it's going to help with the insect problems. There are a bunch of ants on here, a few mealybugs. It's not that bad. Nothing compared to what it's been like in the past. But the neem also has antifungal properties to it, so it would be good to get that down into those crowns. But I have been every other week spraying a copper-based fungicide down into the crowns. And I, I, maybe it's helping. I don't know. I think the thing that's going to help the most with a situation like this is to get the plant into the like bright, intense sun and help cook out whatever disease is in there. I know that sounds weird, but it actually it usually is fairly effective. Also, with areca palms, when you've had them for a really long time in these pots, sometimes they'll just start to prune off their trunks. Like, it just kind of happens. There will be some trunks that start to die off over time. New trunks come out from the base, which isn't necessarily a bad thing in this situation because this one was getting a little bit too big to keep in the grow room. It touches the ceiling, so if some of those trunks come off and it starts to regrow from the bottom, that's okay with me. I'm fine with it. Like you can see up here. Well, maybe you can see. I don't know if it's going to show very well on camera. That spear that's coming out of the center of this trunk, it's brown. I gave it a gentle pull and it didn't come out. So it's not fully rotten, but it's, that's not supposed to look like that. It should be green. And like this right here shouldn't look like that either. I haven't seen enough discoloration to make me think that there's some sort of deficiency going on and it's been fertilized on a regular occasion with fertilizer for palm trees. There are variables that go into that. There are things that can make it not as effective, like a pH, for example, down the soil or in the water. That can make some nutrients unavailable to the plants, but my water's pretty much in the neutral range. So I'm not concerned about that. So this is a plant where I take it right out to the sun. That, that's all that is. And then the croton. Y'all know crotons, they like to drop their leaves. Move them outside, they drop their leaves. Move them inside, they drop their leaves. The only way to get around that is to do very long 
acclimation periods, like very slowly, gradually changing the amount of light they get. So the croton is one where I will probably in a few days just put it where it goes. It's going to get a lot of sun, but it's likely to drop its leaves anyways, and then it'll flush out with new ones, and it's not going to be that big of a deal. And this particular croton, it's going to be different. There are some crotons that need shade. Some can take a lot of sun. This is, I believe, just a Petra. It just looks like a Petra, like your average ordinary croton. The leaves, see the darker leaves on top? That's what they do when they start to get a lot of light. And they were like that when I brought this out, because this was pretty close to the grow lights. The grow lights were only a couple feet above this. Grow lights are never going to be the same as the sun, but still, they're intense enough to get the foliage to get more of that blackish tint to them, so that you can see the black color, meaning that it was getting more than enough light in there. So I doubt it would go through much shock at all if I just move this right to where it needs to go. For right now, I'm gonna give them all a couple days to just chill where they're going to get morning sun and it's pretty cloudy out and it's going to be cloudy for a while. The uh, uh, Thai constellation, I turned that around so that the foliage, like, even if the clouds do break, the leaves aren't going to get any direct sun on them because that, I mean, that would be really bad. They grow way too slow to take any risks. It's not like they're croton where if there's some damage to it, it's just going to drop the leaves and put out new ones and no big deal. Not with a Deliciosa. No, they don't grow fast enough for all of that. Plumeria doesn't even have any leaves on it, so I'm not worried about it. Have some cactus here that I actually should move those. Those are going to get too much light right there. Otherwise, everything is good. Oh, I forgot I brought the machete out <laughs> so that I could do this on camera. I took the machete, cut the top part of the foliage off, cleaned off anything that was dead around there, a, a knife, anything clean and sharp would have worked for that. That's just, that's what I had. And then, like I said, I'll put this in bright, intense, full sun, and within a few weeks, it should flush back out and Looked like nothing ever happened to it. And I moved the Bird of Paradise out. Not much to say there. It's out. Had some damaged foliage from last fall, but otherwise, it's a trooper. Not much to say with that one. Just keeps on growing. Excellent plants, just like the White Bird of Paradise. Love them. Oh, good morning. Someone's made themselves at home. You enjoy the Nature Channel? Been looking out these windows watching the birds all morning. He's so sweet. I love my smudge cycle. Good girl smudge. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you You have no touch zones. I'm sorry. I stick to just the head. I'm so sorry, smudge. I hear bells. Is there another cat coming? Hey, Charlie. What you doing, Charlie? You creeping? Being a creeper? No, he doesn't care. He's like, whatever. Pumpkin's adjusting. He's starting to hang out with her cousin again. So many cats. What you doing, Charlie? Okay, bye. <laughs> the two of them. He doesn't care that much. He doesn't spend that much time watching her. Pumpkin, though, has been, like, following her everywhere. Has a constant eye on her. It's all good, though. They're comfortable enough to eat around each other now and look away from each other and play in the same room, so they're good. All good. Just took a day. She's so cute. This cat has so much personality. Anyways, back to plant things. Looks like there were some storms last night. The papaya stick. I'm gonna have to do something else with that. Supposed to have more storms, so I might just leave. Well, I should move. That's a lot of weight on top of the cactus and on this plant, but I may go ahead and just lay it down the other direction because this bird of paradise is in a smaller pot and it tips over fairly easily. Last night, what I wasn't able to film because it was raining, but I just kept on working through it, is I started to move out these smaller plants, all the stuff that were on the shelves. And the challenge ever since last night and today has been, where am I going to put all these? I don't need all the little plants. All the nanooks, the tritoscantias, those will get planted up. The begun I don't, you gotta be honest, I don't care about this plant anymore, but it's done a lot of growing and it looks cool. Whenever I've grown the maculatas before, I usually put them in planters and like would stick them in with some of my palm trees where they would get filtered light from the fronds above them. And they always did wonderfully, so I may go ahead and do that. I, it's just not one of those plants that I love it quite enough to have it as a standalone plant. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I've grown them off and on for so long that they just don't do as much for me anymore. I don't know, like they're cool. They have really fun foliage. What's not to love about that? Maybe we need to spend more time together and get reacquainted. That's probably what it is. I had to get creative <laughs> where to put things because I still need to like move some of the bigger plants back into some shadier spots. And uh, I don't want little plants 
scattered all over the place. I'm trying to keep things more tidy because there's some things that are going to be going on over the next few weeks as far as just like remodel, not remodeling, like redecorating out here. And in years past, like there, I've ended up with plants, little plants, like in six inch pots scattered all over the place. And I just, I don't like the way it looks. So I've been more picky about what to keep and what goes where. But here's, you know, some of the Vandacious orchids and the Dracaenas. Here's a hibiscus that has really fun orange flowers. That's not in flower right now. This one was on everything that I'm showing you right now were on the shelves. There's a poinsettia from, you know, Christmas time, from the holidays. Sansevieria, then there's a whale fin Sansevieria back here that already had this damage on it, but it started to put up some new growth down there, so that's good. The Lickety Split Philodendron, it's got repotted last fall, I think, something like that, and then just orchids. Stromanthe down there, the Trio Star, one of them right there, some of the various alocasias down there and then a pink princess that I had decided I wasn't sure if I wanted it because me and this particular pink princess have never done well together. I had a different one a long time ago that just grew wonderfully, grew like a champ and it was always lovely. This one reverts all of the time. So what I decided to do with it was just put it on my shelves where it would get some humidity and some mist and just let it do its thing. I did not do anything with this plant over the winter time and it started to put up lots of little babies because I think it was under the assumption that I was just going to let it die. See, see what I'm talking about? Like it was just always throwing up all white, all pink. This particular pink princess was always a pain in the butt. So I'm not gonna throw it away. Cause I mean, it's a perfectly healthy plant. I'll let it keep doing its thing. I may go ahead and repot it just so that it has a better shot, but if you look at it. I'm actually pretty impressed that considering I did nothing with this plant, I made sure it got water, but that was it, that it still, it kept growing and put up little offshoots. That was probably its response to not getting enough water. That was probably like, okay, need to make babies. Or we're going to die. No, I don't know if they actually get that complex. The coconut orchid, Maxillaria tenifolia. Look at lots of flowers. See the flowers? Are they going to focus? There we go. I was happy to, I could have moved this one out a while ago because they can take some cooler temperatures, but things were just so unpredictable. And we had two nights with light frost last week, which isn't something I can recall having to deal with in May, but it happened is what it is. And I don't think that this, the flowers on this would have been very good had they experienced that kind of cold. It's been in flower for a while too, for a few weeks. This is actually probably the best bloom set I may have ever gotten off of this one just tons and tons and tons of flowers and they smell very nice. Kind of like a vanilla -y scent. Some people say they smell like coconut. Some people say they smell fruity. To me, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of vanilla-ish. Really fun little flowers on them though. This is an orchid though that I grow more for its foliage and its form. It's just a neat looking orchid. Fun suitables. And the garage is almost empty. I'm almost done. All that's left are, there are a few plants left on the shelves. There was one plant that had some scale on it that I went ahead and treated and I couldn't decide if I wanted to keep it or not. So I will probably keep that plant somewhere else just for a while, it's an orchid. Some hanging baskets that like the Christmas cactus and those things, those either come out and then I'm done. Except I still have to put everything somewhere to acclimate to the sun. So I have to keep pushing things back into the dark and then you know, we've been through it. Almost done though. <laughs> the second I get set up for a follow-up, starts misting. I think another storm's rolling in. It'll be like storm number six for this last few days. This is it. This is the last group. This is, I know it looks dead. It's just, it's a heliconia. It dies during the winter time. And so I just need to come in here and cut this stuff back and it'll put up it's new growth. This is the Hirsuta Costa Flores. This is the only variety of Heliconia I've grown that successfully just dies back and comes back and dies back and comes back. The others, they usually do better with them. They keep some green on them. That was totally unsolicited. I don't know why I went on that tangent. Rest of the plants are here. A couple of orchids that fell behind some things. They're gonna need a little TLC. Everything else is actually looking pretty good though. I'm pleasantly surprised with how a lot of the plants did this winter, particularly the Bismarck palm. Bismarck, yeah, I mean, it's got some stuff on it. It doesn't look perfect, but I told y'all, I did, like, did nothing with this palm tree in the winter, and it did splendidly. Splendidly, splendidly, is that a word? Can I say that? I don't know, the gnats are getting bad. I got one of those mosquito net hat things to wear to, for those biting gnats, but they just, they fly right through them. 
play right through those holes. Pool pond's draining down. Gonna get that cleaned out sometime here in the next few days. The shelves are draining out. I pulled their plugs, so that water's gonna come out of those. And I take them out, wipe them down, dry them off, put them away, fold the tables up, and then I put a car back in here. That's what's supposed to be here. I have to pull the stuff up to the insulation board. Toby, you're such a good boy. You're so well behaved. He knows. He's like, I don't cross the line if you don't tell me to. You're so good, Toby. Such a good baby, Toby. And that's it. That's where I got to end things. It's been a very chaotic couple of days. Normally moving the plants out isn't a big deal. It wasn't a big deal this time either, but I was just working on like 15 minute increments when it wasn't raining. And then at one point last night, I just said, forget it. And I kept working while it was raining. I didn't mind. It felt kind of nice. I haven't gotten a ton done this week other than well, I shouldn't say this week. It's only been two days since the last video came out. So it's been a very productive couple of days in that sense. But I have an area on the patio that's been a problem for a while. The table there is broken. So I'm going to get that cleared. Well, just look. I'll just cut to it. Huh? Much better, right? That didn't take that long. That was like another hour. No big deal. Got this spot cleared off. And uh, now this table that's over here is going to go over there very carefully because the, the table's broken too. It's just not quite as broken as the other one that had to go away. This table though, um, holding on to it because I have a family member who just got a house. They'll be moving in a couple months. They may want it. If not, then I, I'll give it away to someone. If, assuming when I move it, it doesn't fall to pieces. Have new furniture coming tomorrow, which I'm very excited about. That's one of the reasons I've been rushing around in the rain, just trying to get stuff done because it was like too big really three big projects in one week, moving the plants out, got to get the garage cleaned up, and then gutting this side of the patio to prepare for the new furniture, which will all be in next week's vlog. Because <laughs> y'all, I'm tired. <laughs> but I'm gonna separate that into two separate videos. Hope you don't mind. Thanks for hanging out while I move the plants out and talk about them, get to see how they did over the winter time. It was a beautiful few days and it was gloomy. The weather's felt really nice. If there's not a video between this one in the next vlog, usually I release a Wednesday video, don't be surprised. I may decide to just take that week off, uh, just to have a little break from editing because I'm gonna have like four and a half hours worth of vlog stuff to get through by the end of this week. So yeah, I may want a break, we will see. Oh, and the last thing I wanna make sure that I mentioned, when I was talking about the Eureka Palm, I forgot to talk about disease. If I were concerned that what was going on here was some sort of fusarium or any other type of disease, then the most important thing to do would be to get it the heck away from all of the other plants. This would be a pretty dumb place to put it, right next to the other palm tree, but I'm fairly confident this isn't a disease. In fact, it's already looking a lot better just from being outside for not even quite 48 hours. All the symptoms it's had, they haven't progressed in a way that would make me be concerned that it's a disease. Okay, starting to miss kind of hard now. I actually have to go. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life, and everything's going beautifully for you. I could hang out under the palm trees here for a moment. Comment down below, say hi. I love talking to y'all. What's going on in your gardens? You got your plants moved out? Usually I do this about three weeks to a month ago, but whatever. I'm just glad that it's done. They're out. They're going to all chill in the shade for a few weeks and then come back out into the sun, except for, like I said, the croton and the areca palm. Those I'll probably just pull right out. But the others, going to be much more gradual and gentle with them. They're just giggling because I looked down there and saw my glider covered in plants. Hey, it works. I'm really looking forward to next week's video, which was last week I said I was looking forward to next week's video because I thought the furniture was gonna be delivered at a different date. So this video was the video I was supposed to be excited about, but it turns out now it's next week's. I'm excited though that I got the plants moved out. Like that alone, thrilled about it. Couldn't be happier. But I'm excited for the new furniture to come. It's just the new table and the new set out here because then I can start getting all the palm trees placed and getting the planters planted up and just like really kick off into summer. I'm so excited. He does not mind the rain at all. Such a Labrador. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. That leaf looks bad. Bye-bye.